What's up guys? Welcome here to Mystical Entertainment Headquarters. My name is Michael. I am the general manager and one of the lead MCs here at Mystical. Uh, to my right is owner and lead MC John Macaluso. What's up guys? How we doing? How you doing? Doing pretty good. Life is good, huh? Pretty good. It's, it's almost spring outside. Yeah, it's a little concerning, but whatever. It's another, it's another topic. Dude. <laughs> I only had to clean snow once this year. So, I'll take it. So, um... So we're going to be introducing Winning Tip Wednesdays, uh, where we're going to bring you some some tidbits of knowledge. Uh, we're going to address some questions that some of our clients have had about ceremony music, about introductions, a bunch of different topics, and um, you know, hopefully, the knowledge that we bring here today and in you know the future podcast will give you some insight as to how to plan your wedding. But more so for me, um, it's going to be reducing stress, making the wedding planning a little bit easier on you. Yeah, so definitely uh, follow us on YouTube. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. YouTube.com forward slash Mystical and NJ. If you uh, go to iTunes, you just search Mystical Entertainment Group and you could follow our podcast there as well. Or the um, Google Play Store if you have an Android for whatever reason. Yeah, you're weird. <laughs> if you don't have that blue on your text, you're. Yeah, green bubbles weird, freak yeah. me out. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, you got to download our app. Go to, uh, to the App Store. Again, Android or, or iTunes and search Mystical Entertainment Group and you will see the podcast right over there while you're on your way to work, wherever the case may be. I know that you guys have wedding brain and don't know what the hell is going on for some of these things. So we're trying to make your life easy with all of our years of experience. Let's so go make your life easy. So we've collected a bunch of questions from um, via Instagram, via in-person meetings with clients, phone calls, so on and so forth. So we're going to run through some of the top questions that people ask when it comes to just the wedding planning process in general, entertainment, music, so on and so forth. Um, and then, you know, we're going to try to give you some good answers and hopefully make your life a little bit easier. Yeah, that's the goal, man. That is the goal. So first question, uh, how to go about introductions or the ceremony with divorced parents or deceased parents? Um, go for it, dude. So, I mean, the, the, the biggest thing that I like to tell my, my, my clients is just keep it simple, you know? We don't have to overly dramatize anything or make anything awkward. Um, if your parents are civil, they can totally be introduced together. You know, here's the mother of the bride, the mother of the groom, the father of the bride, the father of the groom. You know, we, we can keep it simple. It's They have to be civil for 10 seconds. Yeah, I mean, you hope that's the case, you know what I mean? But sometimes it just isn't because whatever happened. Um, so we try to make it easy. Um, so what happens when, you know, the parents are divorced, maybe they are not on the best of terms. What do you do then? They wanna kill each other, whatever it is. So, so we make it easy. We, uh, you know, sometimes if there's a sibling, like a, a brother or a sister. An uncle. You know, uncle, um, even grandparents. You know what I mean? Like whatever, you know, they can come in with them together um, into, the, into the actual reception. Um, I've had it where the mother of bride came in with her son, you know, her other son, obviously not the groom, um, or their new spouse. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's, Maybe they got remarried. Pretty simple. You know what I mean? Sometimes you, know, you got to ask them and see if they wanted to come in alone, if they're comfortable doing that. And otherwise, you know what I mean? You can pair them up with somebody that they're comfortable with to come into uh, to the room with. So the gist really here, again, is just keep it simple. You know, we can do, introduce them separately. We don't have to make it, you know, a big awkward moment. Here's the mother of the groom, big round of applause, and keep it moving. Yeah, and then just make sure to introduce them to, like, their wedding song. So they'll really, really like that song. Or something that they enjoy, you know? Maybe <laughs> <laughs> um, next question. The bride wants to dance with her mother, too. When um, do we do that? So there's a bunch of different ways that we can go about it. Um, one of the things that I've done in the past is reserve a separate moment for the uh, dance with mom where the bride can dance with the mother um, outside of dancing with dad. So we can do it during maybe, you know, uh, the first course, maybe bracketed around the beginning of the end of dinner. Um, but it's not something that you have to ignore uh, because it's not traditional. Yeah, I mean, like, in the beginning of a, a wedding, there's so much stuff going on between, like, everybody coming in from cocktail hour and all that, and their, their bellies are all full and... They drank a ton and they want their next drink because they're sitting there waiting for introductions and first dance and parent dances and all that. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing it, and some people, if it's a short dance or you're doing two short dances with like dad or mom. Um, yeah, you can do them back to you back. You can do them back to back, but typically I like to save it for later. You know what I mean? Just, just spare everybody the boredom. Um, not boredom, but like, it's just so much stuff going on. Formality yeah, after yeah. formality. You don't want to leave your guests sitting for too long. Yeah. They'll, be, they'll be complacent. Yeah, because if you think about it, then after that, you sit everybody down and couple of things happen you know if there's if there's a hot course then 
the uh, the venue has to serve that. You know what I mean? There or speeches. Yeah, you got speeches, dinner orders, all that. So here they are sitting down for like forty five minutes. So you know, stuff it in salad course. You know, at the end of that, or even to break up the uh, after dinner. Like at the end of dinner, we just announce mom, acknowledge her. Everybody's there in the room. You know that, and uh, it just makes it so much easier. You know what I mean? You just get that out of the way, and it kind of segues into the dance portion. The dance party. Yeah. I've also split a song between mom and dad. So the bride will dance the first half of the song with dad and then mom will come in and she'll finish off the song with mom. Mm -hmm. That way you kind of kill two birds with one stone for lack of a better term. Yeah. Um, and just keep everything rolling right along. So yeah. And if you go to uh, go into our app, well, at least when you're our client, you'll have like suggestions for like the top mother daughter dances or not mother daughter dances, bride father dances and you know, special and dances and, and as a whole. Um, so it makes it life easy. But really one of the key here, one of the keys here is um, hiring experienced professionals. An experienced MC will make all of these questions super smooth, not awkward, super simple, um, and do it in a way that it just you know it seems like it's part of every uh, an everyday wedding. So yeah, and by that he meant us. So <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> so we're gonna get to the next question. Uh, what should we walk down the aisle to during the ceremony? Cool. Um, so I mean, there's a million ways you can go about it. Uh, you can be traditional. You can do your Canon and D and your Mendelssohn's and your wedding march and all that kind of stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I like to tell people, yo, let's be different. You know, it's 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 2020. Um, you can do whatever you want to do. You know, you can walk out to upbeat, fun music. You can. There's a million different things you can do. What are some of your suggestions when it comes to, um, you know, what to choose for the recessional, the processional, all that stuff during the ceremony? So we kind of break it up into like four different segments of the ceremony. So the first part is uh, what we call the prelude, right? So basically while everybody's sitting down waiting for you to come out, um, theme it up, you know? Like I love movies, I love movies, and I wish I, I had a, a traditional wedding at a church, but you know, if I was able to do, let's say like the soundtracks from like 80s songs, like yeah. I, oh my God, it was the best. It was yeah. like all the best, best songs stuff. ever. Yeah, you know, but like you could do that, you could do, mob hits you could do uh sinatra type of stuff um sometimes people listen to sirius satellite radio and they like coffee house you know what i mean yeah. like some chill stuff or you could do like a lot of like the like youtube right now is blowing up with with a lot of like great talent like there's these two dudes that call themselves uh, the piano guys they got a piano and a cello and they literally sold out madison square garden crazy two nights in a row with a piano and a cello yeah it's like michael jackson stuff <laughs> it's crazy but, but um, I mean, string quartet's also a, a, another popular group. Uh, the Brooklyn duo, um, and what the what, what performers like this afford you guys is being able to have classical renditions of modern music. So you know, maybe you're a big Bruno Mars fan, or maybe you're a big I don't know Tupac fan. You want to walk out to like a gangster rap song. Yeah. Um, some of these some of these groups will they'll, they'll they'll do the piano, the cello, the violin. So you'll have that light, airy classical music vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you're guessing to be like, wow, is that, you know, a top 40 hit, a pop hit, a rock song. So, yeah. uh, you so know, so they could just like, they'll, they'll be sitting there like singing the words to these songs in their head and like, yo, this is awesome. It's cool. It's yeah. different. You know, it's, it's unique. So even at that, you know, then you're going to have like your, your next three portions. You're going to have your processional for, uh, the groom and the bridal party and flower girl ring bear and all that stuff. And then processional for the bride. So she got like her grand entrance song, you know, and then your recessional. So typically those two a lot of our clients at least are doing these piano guy type artists um the one dude daniel jang is cool too yeah, he's know. big um so they love it they really really love it and then after that with the recessional after they say i do bug out you know like yeah, go you go can, it doesn't have to necessarily be instrumental it could be anything yeah literally anything it could be edm it could be rock um i had a, a a couple that during their finals meeting we um we had a pretty funny conversation actually um, we, you know, obviously talking about the wedding and the details and all that kind of stuff. And then however it came up, we started talking about the, the Yankees, the New York Yankees, the 28 time world champions um, for, you know, all my Red Sox fans out there. Um, or the Astro fans. Yeah. But you know, yeah. we, we don't talk about the Astros. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we were just talking about how awesome going to Yankee games is and, you know, um, kind of reminiscing on when we used to watch Mariano Rivera come out of the bullpen. That was one of my favorite things about going to Yankee games is, being in the stands, listening to Enter Sandman by Metallica come on, and watching Mo come out. Um, and, you know, they were like, oh, my gosh, yeah, I remember that. That was awesome, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I mean, honestly, jokingly, I was like, hey, you guys should do that for your recessional at the uh, at the wedding. And they looked at each other. We're like, 
whole yes let's do that let's yeah, do I, that i wanted to get introduced to that song but <laughs> that kind of got shot down um so yeah we we did as soon as they you know though i now pronounce you husband and wife and me kiss your bride everyone cheers and then boom enter sandman comes on and let me tell you man um their guests went wild like everyone was standing up cheering you know hands up like it was such a cool moment um so you know so awesome and we're, we're kind of biased to it because we were in Mosh Pits and Metallica concerts. Yeah, we love Metallica. So. At Madison Square Garden. Um, They're awesome. But again, you know, <laughs> that, that kind of leading back to what we were saying before, dare to be different. You know, you can be unique. You can kind of set the tone for the rest of the day. There's nothing wrong with being traditional. If you want to be traditional, cool. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. But understand that dirt for that for that part of, of the, the ceremony, that's where you can really set the tone for the rest of the day. Yeah. Play something upbeat. Play something fun. And when your guests leave the ceremony, they're already in a good mood. They're ready to rock. They're ready to move around. So great moment. You know, I, I personally loved uh, "Can't Take My Eyes Off You," Frankie Valley. Good song. Like, reminds me of another movie. Um, Jersey Ten Boys. Ten things I hate about you, bro. Oh. With Heath Ledger. Yes, 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 like yes. Singing yes, yes. it in like the uh, in the the bleachers and. Mm -hmm. like, it was just it's an awesome moment, you know what I mean? But like everybody, everybody's gonna relate to that song, even young, old. Everybody's gonna love it, you know. It's, it's Did you ever watch dope. Hitch? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So you <laughs> you remember the last scene when they were like having like a like a Soul Train dance battle or whatever? Now that we found love. Yep. Heavy by Heavy D. D and the Boys. Yeah. So that's something I've done before, and again, it's the same vibe. You know, they walk out dancing and smiling, and it's fun, and it's, um, you know, it's it's exciting, it's energetic. So yeah. dare to be different. Yeah, it really could be anything. I mean, I've done like. A, Kygo, Higher Love, or yeah, um, best uh, best day of my life, American author, fun song too, you know, like um, you know, Prodigy, Snap Your Bitch Up, you know, and <laughs> I'm just kidding, <laughs> but I mean, Yo, he, that, he, guy, he, that guy died like last year, like recently too, really, yeah, like like I saw him like the last like eight months or something like that, yeah, so R.I.P. to that crazy guy. I bet he like overdosed, right? <laughs> no, I think he was probably like 85 years old. I think at really? this point, oh, I don't know. Damn. dude, he had to be like 40, 50 when he did. You that know, was like high when school. they were huge, yeah, yeah, and we're now like 40, 50, the, so you know, the, yeah. he's got <laughs> <laughs> um, but real quick caveat with that stuff um, your entertainer, your professional, should also not be a yes man, okay? Because sometimes people have some pretty bad ideas. Um, you know, your entertainer should understand with his experience what works and what sometimes maybe might not. Mm -hmm. So maybe you don't want to do that during the recession. So, you know, if your entertainer says, Yeah, that's a great idea, that's a great idea, yeah, that's a great idea. You know, be careful. Yeah, yeah, and 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 honestly, to make everybody's life easier, um, we're gonna put out a blog on this, and we're just gonna pop links to a bunch of different stuff. We're gonna kind of just break it up into different genres and 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 different like links to every YouTube video, um, just so it can make your life easy. You know what I mean? A lot of people leave this part blank, and it's fine. It's fine. Like in our in our portal, yeah. they can leave it blank, and we'll just they like just don't know. Yeah, we'll sit down with our laptop and we'll actually show them and help them listen. And once you get that tear out of the bribe, Boom. like you got the winning song. Yeah. Right. Cool. So, all right. Moving so, yeah. along. Um, so, wants versus needs. How do you pick what to cut out of your wedding budget? Um, this is something that, you know, I explain to my guests, um, I'm sorry, to my clients during our meetings and all that kind of stuff is you don't have to make every decision right here and now. You know, sometimes people are like, oh, the dance on clouds, that'd be cool if I can add it in later, blah, 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 blah. So what I kind of tell people is like, if you don't want it, need it, gotta have it, don't get it, you know? Don't yeah. talk yourself into something just because it's trendy or it's cool or, you know, Rachel had it at her wedding. You know, it's 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 easy to kind of like overspend, <laughs> right? You know, you're you're, you're sh blowing your wedding budget out of the water. So it's easy to. It's really. I mean, especially. I mean, I don't know if anybody's listening like across the country, but like in New York, New Jersey, like our area, it's actually ridiculous. And that's like probably like eighty percent of your budget goes to to the venue. To the venue, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Seventy six thousand is your average wedding in in this area. I was there. I was you there. know what's crazy? November fifteenth. 3.5 miles away, Midtown Manhattan, that number jumps up to 95,000. Insane. Three and a half miles away. It's Insane. crazy. So with that being said, it's very easy to just, you know, this is hot. This is cool. I need this. If you need it, I understand. But don't talk yourself into something you don't need. And also, you don't have to book it right now either, you know? Yeah. So what I, what I tell my clients, um, get your core stuff out of the way, right? Like you need a venue, right? You're... A bride obviously envisions her dress her entire life. You need your dress. Um, but then you got your photography, super important. Entertainment, super important. 
And then, you know, once you get those core three, four things out of the way, then you could start talking about, you know, video. Can we fit in the budget? Right. Can we slot it in there? Do I need a party dress to change into? Yeah. Or you don't. do I need to spend 2000 on invitations? You know what yeah. I mean? Like there's, there's different options out there available. You just Google them. You know what I mean? Some people want the bougie invitations that they're spending four G's on. You know what I mean? But like, do you need to? No, yeah, I got, I, you know, I got a wedding invitation that was like three dollars and fifty cents to mail because <laughs> it was that big and you know crazy. So it's, it gets out of control, you know. And and as long as you you get those big items out of the way, then on your little Excel spreadsheet, everybody should have that. Everybody should have that damn thing. And you know what? Like, I'm gonna make a template for that too. I'm gonna make an Excel spreadsheet template so you guys can download it. Um, I'm gonna drop the link in this video. I'm gonna make a nice. I, I love spreadsheets so. <laughs> yeah, I have I have that with, you know, my uh, for my wedding. So expenses and all that kind of stuff helps you kind of track everything out. Yeah. But to dive a little bit deeper, um, like entertainment specifically, you know, I have a bride that comes in and says, you know what, I need lighting, I need a good sound system, I need an awesome MC, um, and I need dance on clouds. Cool. But I might want a monogram, or should I get a photo booth? They're 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 pretty popular. You know, I, I, maybe I want a photo booth. And um, even to build on that, like favors back in the day was like a necessity. Oh yeah, Every, I mean, for, at least for Italians, like you needed like those little like Jordan almonds that were like yeah, I, I don't even know what they were. Yeah, <laughs> I had a million of those things growing up in my house. I mean, what the hell? They're just all over the place. But you needed those with like your espresso cups or or whatever. But like nowadays, like honestly, take the photo booth from us. You can go to Etsy, order like a two by six acrylic frame get the get the insert made for it and it says you know welcome to our wedding thank you so much for coming um in lieu of these photo i mean in lieu of in lieu of favors we decided to make a donation to something near and dear humane maybe. society or cancer research yeah. or something. i like cool. dogs and puppies you know what i mean so like you can do something like that but like do that and you kind of kill two birds with one stone you know what i mean so you don't have to go crazy spending you know, five dollars a person yeah. for favors, and then that they're going to the photo booth too. Just kill two birds with one stone. That's going to go in the garbage when they go home anyway. Yeah. Um, but you know, kind of again back to what I was what I was getting at is, uh, you know, if the monogram is something that you're like, oh, I would like it, maybe if we can fit it into our butt. You know what? Book the core of what you want now. You know, you want lighting. You know, you want clouds. You know, you want you know, Mike to be your MC. Awesome. Put put that in put that in writing now, and then revisit. You know, three months out, four mm -hmm. months out, six months out. Yeah, maybe you your know? maybe your fiance hits a, a box in a Super Bowl. There you go. Or, you know, you know maybe it's you know, big on draft takes games. takes the over in an X and an XFL <laughs> game. Um, <laughs> but you know, you might four, five, six months down the line. Four, five, six I'm months only, I'm down the line. Look at it. Fandle. Four, five, six months down the line, you might see that hey, I didn't spend as much on my dress as I was expecting, or I didn't spend as much on invitations as I, as I was expecting. So I have a little bit of money left over in the budget. You know what? I will get that monogram. Mm -hmm. I will get that photo booth. You know. Yeah. Um, and my biggest thing with that is once you find the vendor that you like, you're, this is my photographer, you have to be my MC. lock them in. Mm -hmm. um, if you wait, we're, you know, we're already booking the 2022, 2023, yeah. you know? So if you wait, you might be stuck with your second, third, maybe even fourth choice, yeah. you know? So once you know the core of what you want, this is my vendor, lock that stuff in and all the ancillary stuff we can always revisit. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just keep it simple, man. <laughs> it's, it's. It's not brain surgery. It's just like, again, it's easy to go over budget, but had that spreadsheet, live by it, swear by it. You know, a lot of times people are like, this is my budget and this is it, but it's like totally unreasonable. Right. You know, just keep in mind, you're going to be spending a decent amount and the biggest part of that is going to be the venue. So that kind of rolls into our next, um, our next point here is, it's, it's, it's a kind of like a little tongue in cheek statement, but we like to tell, you know, how, how do, how do I plan my wedding for $3,000? Mm -hmm. My short answer is move to Texas. Um, because it's not going to happen here, but maybe, maybe. Yeah. Texas is even blowing up. Yeah. <laughs> but, but last time I checked the numbers, I think that the average wedding in Texas is like 14,000, but they're also using plastic, plastic, you know, cups and plates and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, but really what I'm trying to get at here is, you know, obviously everyone has a budget. No offense to you people in Texas. Yeah, I guess. Um, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> obviously you have a budget, you know, you don't want to go over it and all this kind of stuff, but you know, how can you really, really kind of tighten down and clamp those things together? Um, and one of the ways that I like to do it and we like to do it here is by bundling, you know, bundling services together, which is something that, that you know, all of your vendors should be doing. Um, I know if you're getting hair and makeup done, you know, you, they'll give you a trial, which they'll charge you for, but 
once you actually book them, that'll come off the uh, the price of, of the mm-hmm. actual service. Yeah. So bundling is big. Use it to your advantage. Um, like for me, if you're getting you know lighting a photo booth and this kind of stuff, and you also want music for your ceremony, well, that's typically an add-on. But you know what? You're already getting a couple services. I'll throw it in. I'll, I'll come in an hour earlier. I'll pop up a speaker, play some background stuff. Maybe I'll throw in your ceremony music, or maybe I'll throw in a monogram at no additional cost. Um, but bundling is is, is, is a, a good way to do it. Also, finding vendors that work with other vendors. Yeah. Like I know you have some awesome relationships with transportation, with photo, video, and that that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, honestly, I would rather work with the photographer that I'm familiar with because like sometimes. Photographers, photographers can be like a real big pain in the ass, man. I mean, I'm sorry for lack of a better term, man, but like sometimes these guys are pulling the couple out at every moment of the reception and not telling you a thing. And it's like, dude, like I was going to open up the dance floor. Yeah. You know what I mean? So obviously, you know, we, we like to discuss everything beforehand and, and understand what we have, you know, what we're dealing with. But just, you know, sometimes these people just got to open up their lines of communication and just make it easy. But when we work with a lot of photographers and videographers that we're familiar with, uh, we could help them with some cool lighting shots. Get like a different like lighting design angle and and help them achieve like the best shots. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about the couple Mm -hmm. and we got to make it same team. We got to be on the same team. Um, But, you know, even another thing that I ask couples when we're having our finals meeting, uh, who are your vendors? Who's your photographer? Who's your videographer? Oh, cool, man. I work with that guy. He's great. He's awesome. I know him. But if I don't, you know what I mean? Sometimes I'll even reach out and be like, yeah. hey, dude, what's up? Um, anything I should do? Yeah. You know, or I'll even ask a couple, um, is there any specific shots? Like other other than like immediate family shots and right. stuff like that, that's a given. Like, Organized shots, like stuff, you know, all my friends like, from college, you yeah. know, I'm a cop, so all my buddies from the tour and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes it easier. You know what I mean? Like if like I did a wedding, I'll never forget about it. It was uh, it was at Nanina's the Park here in, in Jersey, and it was an Italian wedding and Indian wedding. There was like 400 people there, and I opened up the dance floor right after dinner. Literally, not one person in their seat, and it was like on the dance floor. It was just overpacked. It was crazy. Photographer comes up to me and she's like, "Hey, can you announce the the bride side of the family to go to the cocktail hour room?" No. I'm like, "What?" She's like, "Yeah, no, just announce it and." Yeah, you know, we're gonna do a family shot with her side, and then we're gonna do his side, and you know, we'll yeah. get one together on a dance floor later. I'm like, I'll uh, announce it. Yeah. But what are you doing? Good luck. Yeah. So I announce it once, I announce it twice, and who's gonna leave? With, you know, who's gonna do when it? When the party's rocking, nobody wants to leave. And now, yeah. and honestly, there's nothing. And now, to our photographer friends here, there's nothing wrong with taking your group shots. You have a job to do. We understand that. Yeah. But communication and timing is huge yeah as long as you plan it yeah because there's gonna be downtime right gonna be okay like salad you can do it during dinner you know what i mean like you could just bang all that stuff out you know and and it's up to a really good mc master of ceremonies to take care of all this stuff and just to maximize the dance time yeah you know so um ever since that i mean that was like 10 12 years ago but ever since that like i just make sure i know what other shots the couple wants and we get it out of the way you know, just, just to maximize the dance time. It's only four hours and it flies by. Yeah. And back to the bundling, you know, when you find a, a vendor that, that has a relationship with other vendors, that can literally save you money. Literally save you money. Yeah. We work very closely with Brian D'Elia. Um, they, you know, they do awesome photo video work. Mm-hmm. And when they send us clients and we send them clients, you know, that synergy there um, is just more beneficial to the clients, you know. Not that we're going to take extra care of them because they come from Brian and all that kind of stuff, but knowing that these vendors have worked together, that, you know, you're booking one of my friends for this, it just it just makes the whole process easier. Better communication. And at the end of the day, they might be more inclined to throw in that photo album or, mm-hmm. you know, discount the photo, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So, Or even give us, like, their video clips and pop them up on the TV screens. Yeah, that too. That's really cool. Like, you know, when people come into the reception room and they see, like, the bride getting ready like, on the TV screens and, like, these different video clips. It's, it's huge. Like, yeah. They're, people are blown yeah, away by that stuff. Yeah, it's really cool, you know. And, and and you know, some other photographers will do like same day edits on their photos and give them to us, and we'll pop those up on the TV screens. You know what I mean? It's just like added value that if you didn't have a relationship with somebody, they're not handing over their nope. SD card. Nope. Yeah, I don't know you. Ain't touching that. Yeah. You know? So it's it's better that you know you kind of approach it that way, where everybody has that that synergy, and hey, you'll save a couple bucks in the meantime. You know, it's it's cool. Yeah. Everybody likes, lo- loves to save money. Um, if there's anything that we haven't covered that you want to learn about, know about, have questions on, feel free to comment. Feel free to, you know, DM us, slide into those DMs. 
um, you know, so, so we can help you guys out. There's might, might be some things we're not covering here today. So just, you know, just hit us up, shoot us a call, shoot us an email, shoot our, some comments in. Our next podcast is going to be really sick. Boom. Really sick. So there's going to be a lot of like, there's one topic that's uh, pretty prominent right now. That's uh, you guys got to <laughs> definitely subscribe and get that, uh, get that <laughs> notification and uh, you'll see, you will see. <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh, going to start off with the next topic and um, it goes, my, my tasted music isn't wedding centric. It's not wedding music. They better be calling that phone. So, my so, taste in music isn't wedding centric. Yeah. So, what happens if you feel like your taste in music isn't wedding music? You know, maybe you were really big into hard rock or rap or EDM, you know, or, you know, jazz, things that you feel that might not be what quote rap? unquote wedding like music. Rap, EDM, you know what I mean? Like, don't worry about it. Right, like honestly, a lot of our couples are badass, and they love, they love that EDM set. Like we're here in Jersey, so like DJs is massive. You know what I mean? They love a lot of that stuff, um, or they went to EDM concerts together and, and all that. Or even like, I mean, you wouldn't think that DMX, yeah, is wedding centric. Dude, <laughs> party up, fun song makes people bug out, man. It's awesome. So, you know, as, as far as as all that's concerned. Um, it really, it really, 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 really is going to come down to the right DJ. I'm not saying necessarily us, you know what I mean? But you need somebody who, who can mix their ass off, you know, um, for lack of a better term, man. It, you just, you really need somebody who knows how to mix in and out of genres, no matter if it's like old school, like yeah. Motown or 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever it is. Um, it's got to be structured right. It's got to be structured tastefully. And if it's mixed right, the older people will be rocking out on the dance floor too. That's Mark the goal. my words, man. Like, listen, when when you go on vacation, right, and you know the DJ's playing like EDM. Do the old people go and sit down? No, no. man, they're bugging out. They're having an yeah, awesome they're time. They're having a great time. You know, so as long as it's done tastefully, you can rock out. You know what I mean? So it's up to you to discuss with your DJ how you want to start the night. You know what I mean? How you want to structure it? Maybe you want to make all the guests happy. Like, you know, at my wedding. Um, what was it four months ago now at my wedding, you know, I wanted to get a lot of the Italian stuff out of the way. Some of the older school stuff, my, my father-in-law, my father-in-law loved the disco you know what I mean? and, um, and, and we, and we did a lot of that stuff. And then post dinner, it was like, okay, we're going to, we're going to go in and mm -hmm. nobody left the dance floor the entire no. night, you know, it, from hip hop to Spanish to EDM to, to classic temptations vibes and all that kind of stuff. And it was just, it was just awesome. It was a good time. Know? But, um, but yeah, like I said, like right now, the biggest trend right now is that the '90s, the 2000s, like rock. It's all sets. coming back. Oh my god, the Fallout Boy, the Yellow Cards, Blink 182, um, Mr. Brightsides, yep. like stuff Killers. like that. Yeah, people are loving, loving, loving that, and I'm so happy because like we were never able to really play that, and now you know between that and like boy band sets. Yep. Um, you those, are my fire. Ugh, those, those stuff. That's like so mm, in right now, and everybody, everybody's, desire. everybody's loving it. Um, Timing is everything too, though. Um, yeah, your DJ can mix, you know, mix in and out of genres and mix stuff well together, but it's also about when it happens. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just cause you're like, Hey, I love rock and your DJ opened your first dance set with a rock set. Yeah. Yeah. Wah. You might, you might get crickets. <laughs> so experience is everything. Timing is everything. Um, I actually had a couple, I don't like to label people, you know, but for lack of a better term, they were alternative. Um, they loved Chevelle, Black Flag Society, Metallica, you know, hard rock. Um, you know, they were they were into body modification. They had gauges and, you know, piercings and they were all sleeved up and all this kind of stuff. Um, but they were having a 200 person wedding at the Park Savoy, which is, you know, your more elegant, more, you know, kind of kind of kind of place. So they were just nervous that, you know, hey, listen, I don't like Bruno Mars, but, you know, I know my mom does. I don't like disco, but my uncles do and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they were really nervous about just not enjoying the music at their wedding. So I told them, I was like, listen, that's what I'm here for. That's what my job is. You know, give me everything you want to hear and I will put it together in a way that makes sense for you. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that we did during cocktail, we, uh, we played, uh, it's a, his name is uh, Richard Cheese. You guys may have seen him in movies. I'm pretty sure he was in uh, The Hangover and, and, and you know things like that. So he does like, uh, like Sinatra style 
versions that's of not, that's not the Dan band. But I think the the, the lead singer is Richard Cheese. What? Yeah, I'm pretty, oh, I think the lead singer is, is Richard Cheese. He does his own thing, so he'll do like a Sinatra, Michael Bublé style rendition of Disturbed, Down with the Sickness. You know, so during cocktail, the family's hanging out and they hear like this nice jazzy kind of vibe, but it's gin and juice by Snoop Dogg, you know, and it's, it, it's fun. It's light. It's airy. It's not going to be like over imposing, but you know, you're still gonna be able to have fun with it. Mm. Um, and then when it came down to the rock, like the actual rock set, what I did is I, I talked to the parks of and I'm like, Hey, listen, the quote unquote older folks, the family, the parents, all that kind of stuff, give them dinner first. Give them their meals first, let them sit down. And while they sat, I rolled into a hard rock set and the bride and groom were elbowing their friends in the head, <laughs> jumping around and moshing and all that. So the short of it is, it didn't intrude on the family. They weren't like, dude, what the hell is going on right mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. And the bride and groom got to have their moment. They got to have their music. They enjoyed it. They had a great time. And, and at the end of it all, they were like, man, I don't know if, if anybody else could pull this off. I'm not saying I'm the only human that can do this. But you just gotta make sure that the guy that you do, or the, the, the company or the person or whoever it is that you do hire has the experience. Has the knowledge and experience to be able to pull that off, you know? And at the end of it, they were like, that, that was perfect. That was perfect. Yeah. My aunts and uncles were dancing. I had such a great time. My my teenage teeny bopper cousins that like, you know, the, the stuff that's on the radio, they had a great time. And, you know, my one friend who rides a motorcycle and has his face tats was <laughs> like, this is this, this is awesome, yeah. you know? so Yeah, and it's just stuff that... Again, you don't want to be like everybody else. You know what I mean? It's just, you just got to make it different. And I think that's what really like makes your, your wedding unique and it makes it you because that's, that's what music's about, yeah. man. And, and, and anybody who can tastefully make everybody come together as one, no matter what, has their shit together. Yeah. Um, Flip side of the coin though, too. You don't want your DJ, like I've had brides come up and say, hey, listen, I love house music, EDM. I don't care about my aunts and uncles and if they don't get up all night long mm -hmm. and I get it. It's your day. I understand. Totally understand. It's your wedding day. You want to have the music of your choice, but the right entertainment company, the right entertainer will guide you and be like, listen, I get what you're saying, but you want to get those folks up. You want to get them up. If, if nothing else for a 20 minute dance set, you mm -hmm. know, give them a little bit of something. Um, and then we can roll into the music that you enjoy. That way everyone had a good time. Cause you also don't want your aunts and uncles to be like, wow, I didn't dance at all. Or yeah. all that, you know, it was loud music or whatever the case may be. You know, you want to, you want to um, incorporate everyone, everyone's taste, but the right entertainer will make that easy. It'll yeah. make it a no brainer. Yeah. I've seen like people who hate country rocking out the country. You know what I mean? Like that. And that's definitely it. Um, <laughs> it's huge right now. I mean, Jersey, New Jersey has a country station. Yeah. And, uh, People are going to concerts left and right, and they're selling out Crazy. all over the place. Yeah, I mean it's it's huge. You know what I mean? So it, it's it's really don't don't worry about the stuff that you like. You know what I mean? Just make sure that you you inform your DJ of the stuff that you definitely don't want. Yeah, communication and, is and, huge, especially with that yeah. do not playlist. Yeah, you know what I mean? And then and then from there, the DJ can work. There's so much music. The DJ can work from within within your bounds, and avoid the stuff that you hate. You know what I mean? And then and just keep it rolling. Yeah. Um, that kind of segues into the next thing right here. So for the rustic New Jersey bride, um, it doesn't really mean country yeah. necessarily. Um, doesn't mean barns and hay haystacks and you know Dan and Shay all night long. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be country just because you want to be rustic. Yeah. So how do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it with like, okay, like uh, some people say that they want to have a rustic themed wedding at the Venetian. <laughs> it's kind of it kind of doesn't make sense, but right. you can but do little things. It can be achieved. You know, the difference is in the details. Um, you know, the table runners, your choice of flowers, your choice of place settings, um, you know, how you adorn the venue, um, what your, what's that thing where people find out where they're sitting? The table chart, the seating <laughs> chart. The seating yeah. chart, yep. All that kind of stuff can have your rustic vibes, you know, your nude tones, your fall colors, your burlaps and stuff like that. Your grass walls at the photo booth. Yeah, grass walls are huge. You know, and then you go on like etched on wood and you can make like a nice little like wooden sign that goes on the on the grass wall and kind of put it together. Even your favors. Yeah. The mason jar things with honey that you... Moonshine. Yeah, I've had that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, that, that's pretty good too. Moonshine. That's, um, that's rustic. So that's how you tie it, tie it all in together. You know what I mean? With the with the flowers especially. Obviously, that, that, that has a big part to do with it. But then... So again, when it comes to the rustic bride, the difference is in the details. Um, you know, rustic doesn't have to equal country. There's color tones, flowers. Um, even even you know what the photo booth strip design can be rustic. Yep, 
You can do a little little a little wood, mm -hmm. you know, some nude tones. Yeah, even backdrop. We have like a rustic backdrop. That's pretty cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So again, rustic doesn't equal country. Um, you know, speak to your professional entertainer or you know wedding planner, whatever the case may be, and they, if they're knowledgeable and experienced, will lead you in the right direction. Sweet. Next question. I like this one actually. How to cut the bouquet and garter toss, but still do something meaningful. Boom. Anniversary dance. That's my first, that's the first thing that jumps into my brain. Um, so first off, then you tell me, you know, I'm sure you've seen the same thing in your events. Um, how many times you, are you doing the garter bouquet anymore? Like I, I've never seen such a drastic decline in that. Like over the so past quickly. two years, like it used to be like closer to like 80, 90% of the people that wanted to do it. And now, now like everyone's 20, like, 30. I just want to party my yeah. ass off. And, and, and that's it. Like if people just want to do that and, you know, even the cake cutting now is starting yeah. to phase out. Like that, that was huge. Like it used to be 100% bar none, like it's done. Yeah. And now I'd say probably closer to 60% of people are actually doing it. Yeah. They're like, dude, we'll just do it off to the side, get the pictures out of the way, and avoid the awkward. Yeah, let me Here's, feed you and smash cake in your face. Like, and, it tastes yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It tastes great. It's awesome. <laughs> it's, you know. Um, did, so, you, did you enjoy that at your wedding? Or no? uh, honestly, I don't, I don't think I remember that part. <laughs> not that I was, it was just like, I was so much. <laughs> So much adrenaline, man. Like, yeah, there's just so much shit going on. It's it's crazy. So the anniversary dance. Um, it's something that you can do. Number one, <laughs> number one. It's it's a good segue into dessert. Um, you do kind of, in my opinion, you kind of want to have a little something to segue you into the dessert, cake cutting, V and E's, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's still a meaningful kind of thing. So the, what the anniversary dance is, is we choose a song. Um, typically what I recommend people do is kind of their second choice for their first dance. You know, if you were kind of stuck in between two songs, you chose one, let's do this for the anniversary dance. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we'll call out all of the married couples in the room. Every single one. If you've been married five days or a thousand years, we invite everyone on down. Even if you're not married, everybody. Yeah, even if you're not, not yeah. married. Cool. So all, all the couples come out. And then we play a nice slow dance. And then as the song progresses, your MC will say, hey, if you've been married for one day or less, a year or less, whatever the case may be, kind you know, kindly find your seat. And the couple, you know, the, the couple that's getting married, I mean, the, the wedding couple, um, they stay on the entire time. Yeah, they stay out there. So, so you know, one year, five years, 10 years, 15, 20, so on and so forth. And then you'll start to kind of whittle down and you'll get to less and more, less and less couples. And then hopefully the last couple left on, you know, on the dance floor is going to be your grandma, grandpa, your aunt and uncle that have been married for 45 years, 37 years, and then you can give them a little something, a bouquet of flowers, a bottle of wine, or something like that. Yeah, and and, and typically, I mean, what we do here at Mystical, um, you know, we get the couple on the microphone, we're just like, oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for you know, Uncle Michael and Aunt Sally. You know, they're married for 67 years. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Big round of applause. And it's, it's a, yeah, and it's a, cool, it's a cool photo, you know what I mean? Because not to say anything bad, but I mean, I, I can't imagine that they're going to be here another 30 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're going to get a great picture with them. And then the moment is, hey, you guys have been doing this for 67 years. What's you're the obviously secret? the pros. Yeah, what's, what's the, the secret? secret? What do you do? Yeah, we did it at my wedding. And a couple, um, it was my wife's aunt and uncle or family friend, I think it was. And it was funny. She was like, just do whatever he says. And I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I had a great, great response. Advice. I had a great response one time um, when, I, when, when I asked the uh, the older gentleman, "I'm like, hey, what's the secret here?" And he goes, "Ah, we sleep on different floors." That's what he said. So that, that was a good one. But the best one ever. I had a Italian groom. Oh, I remember this one. Oh my god, it was. I'll never forget it. It was at the manor, and the grandpa gets on the phone, not on the phone, geez, on the microphone, and. He's like, yes, yes. And he's smiling like he's getting ready to say something awesome. He's like, having lots of sex. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so, Dr. Great, Phil will um, say that's the key to a good relationship. It was the greatest. So. And she's smacking him. It's all on video. It was freaking such a great moment. So it'll give you some fun moments like that. Um, it'll replace the garter and bouquet. It'll segue you into dessert. So that's that's a, a pretty you know easy way to do it. It's one simple song, four or five minutes max. You get some good laughs out of it, some good pictures out of it. And it's a touching moment as well. Sweet. Now, our last topic of today's podcast. How do you make the best out of your four hours? Four hours. Th like, real, real quick, think about this. You're planning this for 15, 18 months, two years, some people, you know, however long you're planning this for. You're spending a ton of money, thousands of dollars. You're probably getting into arguments over, you know, whose cousin sitting next to who and what flowers to choose and all this other crazy stuff, right? You got to cho choose music and dresses and fittings and go on a diet and listen, all this other crazy to stuff. your mom's opinion. Your exactly. Mom's opinion. Exactly. You should do this. You should get married here. <laughs> now, all of this is for 240 minutes. Four hours of your life. 
Four hours. Yeah, I I, I had a five hour reception because I I know, but even then, I was like, wow, it flew, and I wanted more time. Like, yeah, it was just you know. So but, you're you're gonna blink. It's gonna be eleven o'clock midnight, whatever time your reception ends. You're gonna blink. It's gonna be over. So how do you make the most out of those four hours? So all this time, effort, energy, money that you're spending, year and a half of planning. I'm sure you've gotten into arguments with your significant other over colors and table runners and all this crazy stuff is going to be for four hours of your life. Okay. You're going to 200, 240 minutes, 240 minutes. So think about that. Okay. Like 14,000 seconds. Something you're going like to blink <laughs> and it's going to be over and it's going to be over. Okay. So how do you make the most out of the four hours that you have for your reception? So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the one thing that sticks out to me is we did his wedding a couple of years ago. His name's Jim McGuire. He owns a place called Essex Cigar. He does all of our hand-rolled cigars for weddings. You got to check them out. They're You're awesome. the man, Jim. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Check them out. They're right in Belleville. Um, really good job. But, but we did their wedding at, at the Florentine Gardens. And the one thing that he told me afterwards, he's like, dude, on a piece of paper, grab a piece of paper and write all the things that you want or got to have or got to do at the wedding. And throughout the day, take it out of your pocket and just make sure you did it. You know, make sure you you uh, you went and sat down with grandma for a couple of minutes. Got that and, picture and, and all took that the stuff. picture. Or, uh, you know, you wanted to say a speech. Make sure, you know, you get your speech out of the way. Or, you know, um, I rented a Ferrari. And I'm gonna go, I don't think anybody's going to forget about that. But <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I rented a Ferrari. I want to go take a picture outside with it during the sunset. So yeah. anything. You know what I mean? Just write down all your stuff. It's not even really about forgetting. It's just, just staying organized, you know, knowing what you want, knowing what you want to do, and sticking to a timeline. Um, you know, one, one of the things we said was like, hey, even if your wedding is only 50 guests and everyone brings a date, that's 100 people that you have to see have to say hi to, okay? They're gonna wanna talk to you, they're gonna wanna drag you around, oh my God, your dress, the ceremony, all this other stuff. So you can very easily get wrapped up and you're gonna look up and I have an hour left of my wedding. Mm -hmm. What did I do? Yeah. What yeah. have I done? Yeah, and honestly, uh, what I would do, um, definitely hire a day of coordinator. Yeah. You know, uh, we have one in house, her name's Luciana, she does an amazing job. She was, you know, at, at my wedding and she was just on top of stuff, man. I mean, you definitely, I mean, the MC that you hire should be on top of it as well. Yeah. But if you have that day of coordinator, it's a great insurance policy. She literally has the whole run of show, entire, everything, everything. And you don't have to worry about anything. She's literally there like, oh, you need your butt dress bustle. Do you, you need a, a drink? Where are my you table know, cards? You know? Where are the, whatever the, the, the silverware, I guess, whatever you used to cut the cake and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Where's that? Where's that going to go? You yeah. know, you don't have to worry about that. And then they're coordinating all the vendors. You know, they're coordinating the maitre d' with the photographer, with the DJ, with everything. And they're just pushing everything through according to all the plans that you had, you know, so it's, it's definitely worth it. So going back to photography, photography is a big topic as well. Shots, getting your shots in, getting who do I want to take pictures with, um, group shots, night shots, four year shots, all these different things, all these different pictures. I mean, honestly, you can spend your entire reception taking pictures. Yeah. Yeah. I like to get that stuff out of the way, like before cocktail hour, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of downtime before, like at between the ceremony and cocktail hour. Um, if, if, if it's on different locations, right. you know, um, if, if it's on the same location, you have all day to do that. Cause typically you get ready at the venue and everything and you bang all that stuff out before yeah. all that. So the one thing that comes into play is the first look. Mm -hmm. Some brides don't like it because they want to see each other, you know, for the first time walking down the aisle. But it sure as hell makes everything so easy with the first. Yeah. Time. Also, during the cocktail hour, say hi to people. You know, take a couple of minutes in the bridal suite. Woo sa. You know, get get your bearings, have a bite to eat. Yeah. Then just jump just enjoy each other for for fifteen minutes at yeah. least. But you then know? the rest of the time, go into your cocktail hour. Say hi to 40, 50, 60 people. That way you don't have to, t I mean, I don't want it to sound mean, but you don't have to talk to them again for the rest of the night. Yeah. You know, you can drink, you can dance, you can enjoy your reception because that's what you're there to do. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, I, I had a pretty big wedding. It was 270 people, but I got on the microphone and, you know, I was there with my wife and I thanked everybody and I said, you know, some words and I'm like, listen, if I don't see you, man, like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm yeah. trying. Yeah. But if you want to see me, just see me on the dance floor. Meet me on the dance floor. You know, and, and that was, we love to dance, you know, and that was our priority. You know, some couples might be different, um, but that sure as hell took a lot of the pressure off us with yeah. the speech, you know. Here's another little, little, little tidbit. Eat when you're served, okay? A good venue is going to serve you first. Better serve you first. Better serve you first, right? <laughs> Sit, eat, knock it out of the way. And then you know what? The rest of that dinner time, 
go to, you know, you can visit tables. Mm -hmm. You can go do those little, maybe go out, take some night shots, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you know, you might not think of these things, obviously, because 99% of the people that we deal with have never been married before. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, like, you need to maximize the amount of time that you have. Yeah. Eat when you're served, sit down, get the food in your belly, because you might turn around after saying hi to four or five people, and then the dance floor is opening back up, or something else is happening, now your food's cold. Mm -hmm. And then logistics, timing is everything. You know, you don't want to stop everything for certain things. Like for, for us, if they have a TV package and they want to show a photo montage, show it during dinner. During dinner. Everybody's there. Everybody's there sitting down. They're, everybody's attention's there. You don't have to tell everybody to sit down and do all, you know, just, they're there. Hey yeah. guys, look at the TV screens Boom. and enjoy the show while you're enjoying your deal, dinner. So it's, it's, it's important to do that. So think about speeches also. Speeches during first course. Don't do your speeches, then wait for the first course, or eat your salad and then do the speeches. Knock them both out at the, at the same time. Yeah. By the time the speeches are done, your first course is going to be done. Hey, let's get this party started. Yeah. And another thing that I would, I would um, definitely consider is just just taking out the garter or the bouquet as a whole. Um, that stuff takes a long time. Yeah. As we mentioned before, it is a dying formality. You know, less and less people are doing it. So if it's not something that you're like, oh my God, I need it. I want it. I like, I, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Skip it. It's more time to dance or more time to eat or more time to drink or more time to do the things you want to do. Yeah. And and if you do get V and E's hour, um, which in Jersey, it's basically just a shit ton of dessert that's just nonstop and crazy. It's basically a second cocktail hour yeah. just for dessert. It's crazy. Yeah. For diabetes. <laughs> um, I would highly recommend getting at least a half hour because um, typically what happens is they're going to take you into a different room. And first off, people are going to think it's over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Especially so, the older folks. Yeah. yeah but, I, but whatever, you know, the older people, whatever you want, like the younger people there for, yeah. for the rest of the night. But obviously you want everybody there for till the end. But I highly recommend getting an extra half hour this way. You're good. Yeah. So um, I think that was really good stuff today. Yeah. You know, a lot of questions that a lot of our Instagram followers had and asked us. I mean, we, we were leading up to this and, and we asked a lot of questions leading up to it that were basically, we wanted to hear from from you guys, yeah. from the followers. You know what I mean? And, and if there's any other questions that we can elaborate on, make sure to comment below on uh, on YouTube or just, just hit us up. DM, DM us on Instagram. on Instagram. Yeah. At Mystical Entertainment Group. And, and with that, I mean, you could see a lot of like the behind the scenes stuff on our story and we'll show you real weddings and what other people are doing and, and really just educate you. You know what yeah. I mean? That, that's what we're here to, here to do. And that's, that's the main goal is education. You know, we don't we, like the, 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 the idea behind these podcast series and all this kind of stuff is to help you plan your wedding, help you reduce stress, make this an easier process for you. And if at the end of the day, you don't choose us for your entertainment company, we're still doing our job. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still doing our job. Um, you know, I feel for clients sometimes, you know, there's so many choices, there's so many things, there's so many questions, what do I do here, what do I do there? So, check us out, listen to our subsequent podcast, subscribe, um, you know, follow us uh, across all, so all social media, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. But just tune in, you know, we're gonna give you some tidbits, we're gonna give you some nuggets, we're gonna give you some things you didn't even think about. Um, and it's just gonna make your life a little bit easier. You know, mm -hmm. this isn't, these podcasts aren't gonna be long-winded sales pitches about how awesome Mystical Entertainment is. Yeah. That's not what we're here to do. Um, you know, we want to help you guys make this process easier. And honestly, if there's any other DJs or, you know, entertainers or anybody in the industry, florists, wedding planners, photographers, yeah, we're here to help you too. You up. know what I mean? You might be, you might be new to the business and not know, you know, we all started somewhere. Yeah. Um, we've been doing it for a long time. You know what I mean? Just feel free, feel free to reach out, feel free to ask us questions. And, and that's what we're here for. Yeah. Man. We, we love, uh, we love doing this, and you're going to see our next podcast coming out pretty soon. That's going to be an amazing topic that you probably never thought about. Make sure to follow. Make sure to subscribe. Subscribe, And be ready. Be ready. It's going to be a good one. Guys, thank you for uh, taking the time to stop in here. Um, and, you know, we'll see you guys soon. John Macaluso. Mike Marquez, Mystical Entertainment Group. Thanks, guys. Come party with me.